playing uh, Voldemort up there. I keep wanting to call it Volkampf. Uh, uh, convinced me, hey, I want to give Age of Steam another try. It's been a long time. I remembered really liking it. Uh, I said some things in my Voldkampf videos. Uh, I did not remember Age of Steam at all well. It is actually very much a similar system. There are some significant differences, and this is going to be sort of an addendum that I'm going to um, try to include in wherever Voldemort, uh, wherever my Voldemort review video goes. I'm only playing the first turn of it right now, or I just completed the first turn. First of all, it has this similar kind of, hey, you got cubes that you got to deliver to colored areas. Now, some of the cubes can't be delivered anywhere until you build the cities that will take those resources. You have some significant differences, though. First of all, and, and, and I want to want to kind of highlight these. I, I, I'm not sure how I feel. <laughs> you know, it's been a long time since I faced Age of Steam. I've played it more than once, but... Uh, you know, it was all kind of close to that video that I did long, long ago. <clears throat> the first thing is, you really do control chunks of track in this. Now, they don't have to be contiguous. However, they all are at the beginning because you're fighting on a shoestring here. It's like, am I going to survive the game? That that feeling never happens in Voldkampf. You know, there, there's... I, I guess it's possible, but uh, the choices are much, much um, trickier here. It's hard to make money when you start in Age of Steam. Um, everybody's lost money on their first turn, but... At least most of them have gotten some income. <laughs> Again, in Voldkampf, you will almost certainly get some sort of income on the board, right? That's not guaranteed here because uh, there aren't as many easy hookups to make right away. So the person who went second to last in track lays. No, the person who went last in track lace was unable to connect anything that would get them a run. Well, that's not tr entirely true. They could have built parallel track here and gotten some cash right away uh, off of this blue that didn't get run. And they wouldn't have they wouldn't have beaten out the first move, so they probably wouldn't have gotten the other things. I don't remember what green delivered in total. But by building this, they, I think they moved two purples here with the thought that a bigger train will get them uh, across here. The key with uh, Age of Steam, though, is that it's not individual tracks that you lay that cost you. Now, in a way, Voldkampf is sort of a, an abstraction of the Age of Steam map where each track lay you play is a section of track between two locations. And those kind of junction things are these towns that increase the number of tracks that you have. But the cost of the track has to do with the actual length. So where there's big distances between cities, you might get a fairly high cost. Now, you kind of have to worry about like, it might be better to have multiple track segments split by towns and such not, because you get more money that way. A straight track that goes a long, long distance still only gets you one buck on the income chart. On the other hand, <clears throat> you need a bigger train. Uh, your train is limited by how many spaces it can go, and that is actually a, a, a cost factor in the game. Not just moving the train up, which is more of an opportunity cost, but every turn that you have a train, and you have one every turn in the game, you have to pay for how far it can travel. Uh, I, forgot a, I, I forgot about a lot of... I mean, I barely remembered the game, you know. Again, Voldkamp didn't look like it to me. Uh, but they are really, really similar. Um, there is a possibility to travel on each other's tracks, and it has the same kind of effect. So if I have a two-run train, I can give myself money and give the black player money. 
Uh, I think it's more subdued in this. Clearly, you know, there are times when you're going to want to do it. When it's m less expensive than running your own track and can get your income up. And so what if it helps someone? You're just, you're helping yourself more. Another big thing that it has, well, it has, instead of cards, it has these selected actions that allow you to, most importantly at the beginning of the game, allow you to grab things like first build or first move, which lets you trump the normal player order. That's kind of big. Uh, others, though, you know, like urbanization, allowed me to build a new city, which let me create a new uh, place where, where the cubes go to. But again, you've got these colored cities, which is where the cubes go to. You've got the cubes going into back into the bag, which means the ones you delivered might come back up again. But unlike in Voldkamp, where you have very little idea of what cubes are going to show up where, here you have this goods display, which tells you what's coming in the near future. However, you don't know where they're going to show up. That's randomized by dice, which, uh, you know, you know, you know what cubes will show up in your cities or in the cities that you're thinking about, but you don't know whether they'll show up in the next turn or honestly ever. They could always be missed. Um, in addition to that, one of the, one of the actions allows you to stock more cubes and put them ahead, probably, of the ones that might be expected, which can be a kind of bonus thing. But there's no other automatic refreshing of the industrial production. So cities that end up big, you're going to have to do a production action to fill those in. Um, Purple had a couple of choices. They were the last player to choose their actions. They chose production. On the first turn of the game, that can't do anything, but I didn't want the locomotive increase because, well, I took one, but I could have taken two plus that one there. I, ju I just didn't want that extra expense at this point in the game. <coughs> Although I probably, I may end up regretting it because next turn it's gonna be a one, two, uh, three run which might be difficult. <laughs> anyway, um, that's where uh, I'm kind of looking at, well, I didn't really see the, see the same, I, I didn't remember this game well enough. I probably was conflating it with things like Chicago Express and some of the winsome games where there's real stocks. Now there's stocks in this, but they're really the bond issue. You do this in the same position. It's got that same facet in it, uh, which I find intriguing. This, I don't have enough money to do anything. And in fact, in this game, you start with no money. You must take two bonds, which gives you 10 bucks to begin with. A little bit less cash on them. The game drains your cash quickly. Uh, as you can see, we've got players with no money ever, you know, in in uh, in Voldkampf, sorry, Voldampf, <laughs> there there all all the players were kind of making positive money on their first turn. Maybe not a lot, but you know they were able to hook up and get one or two bucks of income on each thing, and then, well, the people who took out any bonds of any significance were able to make more than that. Plus, there was the collaborative effect that, hey, here's an offer, I'll hook you up, you hook me up, we can both make money off that. That can happen here. That might have been a good choice uh, for the purple player who was unable to make any income. But it also looks like control of your own area rather than hooking up directly right away on the first turn uh, is pretty is fairly valuable. And, and the key thing is, unless you have that additional engine, you're not going to be able to use someone else's track to any effect that's positive. So unless two people, you know, both buy, get an extra engine and they're running on each other, and they can get an advantage that way. But I think the better advantage is building your own track. Anyway, 
again, forget whatever the fuck I said about uh, Age of Steam. I got to tell you, though, the beginning of this game is just so fucking harsh. Uh, I spent a lot of time sort of zoning over the map, even though I had just played something kind of similar, have played this before. Uh, and again, the one thing that I feel like I, I, I kind of remember on my first video is, uh, on Age of Steam not being able to do effectively was take into account, hey, what's going to show up here? Do I want to build track there? Again, I was unable to do that this time. Uh, I feel like I made some moves that weren't terrible, but I feel like I'm just blundering around in a, in a hopeless way. So this is where Age of Steam is, is the worst. Right at the beginning, um, it definitely feels like it's Really, really hard to decide what to do. However, I'm pretty damn convinced that the late game, your track is going to be consolidated, probably. And you're not going to be making these tangled uh, decisions on how much of other people's track you're going to run over. As that gets big, it might, it might change. But that's an option that players may not find uh, economically feasible because that's a big cost to pay like five or six bucks every turn out of out of your cash on hand. The one thing is income is permanent just like in uh, Voldom which means as long as you can raise it, ah oh, stupid poor purple, eventually you're gonna be able to exceed your problems. This one also has sort of a catch-up mechanism in terms of these income reduction markers. Um, as you hit certain phases of the game, uh, of the income track, your income just declines automatically. Now, victory conditions are your income times three, plus a point for each, oh man. Okay, maybe I'm fucking this up completely. All right. So, each different completed railroad link, yeah, no. So yeah, you get one buck of income for each link you have between two locations. But in the, in the victory points phase, you get three points for each point of income you get, plus one for each section of track, i.e. each tile, that's part of one of your completed links. And yeah, and then there's also this added complexity where you start building track and maybe you abandon it, and then it becomes available to other people. Uh, if you don't continue building off a section of track on your next turn, you lose the right to own that track anymore, and anybody can use that track and take control of it which is another funky kind of thing where it's like uh, that kind of reminds me of the uh, the competitions again in UP which was something I mentioned before anyway I just want to get some of this out here because I said such I, I had such completely different con conceptions uh, of what Age of Steam actually was and Voldemf didn't feel anything like it to me. And now, I mean, some of it did. I understood the sections of the delivery part, but I think I was confusing it uh, more with uh, something else. Possibly Chicago Express. Who the hell knows? This is, uh, this is the problem with lots of new games, you know, all, all the new games that have come out for me, you know, that I've been acquiring over the past more than a decade compared to my old standbys that I really do remember well. But also, uh, so many of them are similar, you know? It's like, I can't differentiate between the different 18xx's for the most part. Like, I might have some vague memory, but you know, 1846, yeah, that was one that wasn't very competitive, had a flat track, I, I think, you know? Uh, and I play a lot of that one. Like, more of that than any other 18xx in the last, you know, I don't know, 20 years or whatever. But I can barely remember it. 
Other ones I can remember a little bit better. I don't know. That one just happened to be a favorite of uh, a guy who managed to get games going regularly. All right, let me send this up and I'll try to plug it into the other one as quickly as possible.